Um, Corey Duffel. I'm going to make this one quick. You know, I never know how to feel about like putting like actual skateboarding legends on these tier lists where I am basically just um, talking out of my ass for uh, a completely unplanned period of time. I think Corey Duffel's like a legit fashion and swag legend. Um, I think Corey has tons and tons of good fits. I also think that Corey has aged gracefully. He hasn't just like completely fallen off or anything like that. Corey has had consistent swag for a long time. Look at this. If you're going to pull off this haircut, which I think that he does, you've got to have a lot of, of drip. I'm going to put Corey Duffel in the top of the swag one tier. I think that's good. You know what? Fuck this. I'm putting Ryan DeCenzo in the paid tier, and I'm putting Louis Barletta in the mid tier. <laughs> Water bender, earth bender, fire bender, air bender, sander bender. Okay. Rob Deerdick. Some of you might know him by his full name, Robert Servidi Penis. Rob is a fashion icon, and you cannot change my mind. Rob has some classic, crazy, crazy white boy fits. Let's just say, hypothetically, for the sake of argument. I was a quirked up white boy. And if I was a quirked up white boy, I might have a little bit of swag and I might bust it down. Sexual style. If that were the case, would I be goaded with the sauce? I don't like to throw around the word art when it is undeserving, but dude, so beast. This machine gun print tee is too fire. Look at this monster t-shirt. Nobody, like, monster is like an ironic trend now that I participate in as well. But Rob Deerdick was like, knocking it out of the park with the monster themed fits over 10 years ago damn this is hard as fuck this was a good era this was a good era sheckler with the volcom chain god damn oh my god rob deerdick looking like he owns a jewelry store he probably does actually however during my research phase uh when i was looking up rob deerdick stuff i came across rob deerdick's new website uh, where he's selling stuff, and some of this is a little baffling. I didn't quite under... He's, like, on some entrepreneurial shit, obviously, because he's an entrepreneur, but he's selling, like, entrepreneur-themed merchandise. Before you start win... They never said winning was easy. <sighs> this this one kind of uh, confused me a little bit. How do you win before you start? Don't you have to start to win? I don't know. Maybe that's... Maybe that's the whole message of it is is question question the paradigm, question the processes that, that control the world. This is a new logo that he's gone with. Mm. Not that sick. It's like those golfers that wear the flat brim hats because um, they don't want to be like the old heads, but like the old heads actually have more swag than the, the new guys. That's like what this is. Do or dire on the side. So is this like a, a kind of a terrible pun? Like do or die -er? you, Like um, you deer have, dick? You, is it do or deer? Or do or die -er? I'm a do or die -er. Like I, you, I do stuff do where so. I die. You, I don't really know. This looks like a money laundering scheme. There's no way that this, this is the logo that they landed on. And then they're also selling these amazing citrine crystal for $150, so this is like an NFT in, in real life. Natural citrine is famous for its ability to help people acquire and maintain wealth. It represents manifestation and abundance seeming to attract success, prosperity, wealth, love, and other good things in life. Rob Deerdick certainly has a lot more money than me, but I would wager that most people that are spending $150 on crystals are probably not prone to attracting tons of wealth. All right, anyway. Uh, even though uh, Rob Deerdick selling his his crystal scheme is a little bit questionable, I have to put Rob Deerdick in the enli enlightened tier because uh, skateboard entrepreneur swag white boy fits in in that when we're talking that dude, R Rob does it the best. His fits are enlightened. Um, okay, Greg Lutzka. <sighs> I think again talking underrated skaters. I think Greg Lutzka is very un underrated he is an extremely good skateboarder like was doing 270 nose blunts when i don't re remember anyone else 
uh, doing them. I think his motorcycle took over his life and he started making like bad decisions at the same time. Like he started getting into motorcycles. Like I, I think this thing that people do is like when they get like a, a, a bike or something and they're like, I have to start ollieing over it for some reason. It's like, no, you don't, dude. You, you can ride your skateboard and ride your bike. You don't need to fucking ollie over your bike. That aside, Greg did have some mean fedora fits at one point in time. Uh, he was the king of the fedora. Don't even, don't at me. Don't even try to tell me somebody else was rocking the fedora in the same universe, in the same league, in the same stratosphere as Greg Lutzko was. Greg Lutzko was, and in my heart, is still king of the fedora. Beef <laughs> this fucking fit. Oh my God. <laughs> he must have been making so much money when this photo was taken. He's got a fucking Toyota decal sticker on his skateboard. That doesn't make any sense. This is a legendary fit. I'm happy this era of K-Swiss Greg Lutzka has not been lost to the sands of time. These days, though, let's go. His current fits are pretty awful. Greg's current fits are real bad. He wears, like, tie-dye shirts and black pants. A tie-dye shirt is a full send. Like, once you go tie-dye, you're, you're full sending at that point with a tie-dye. Then black pants are like a half send. That's like a conservative article of clothing. So how can you full send on the top, but then half send on the bottom? Doesn't make any sense to me. See, there he is fucking ollieing over his bike again. I thought it was weird that he was dressing like that now. And so I Googled him. Let's go to his website here. Gregletzka.com. They're fucking again with the bike, man. Uh, I, I came across this grassroots collection. I was like, this is interesting. I don't know if Greg Lutzka is an investor in this business or is just paid to market it, but th this is the ugliest hat I've ever fucking seen in my entire nearly 25 years of existence. I'm going to be 25 next month. Um, this is the ugliest fucking hat I've ever seen. A hundred percent. Uh, this is... <laughs> So I I like I can't believe my eyes that that this hat exists. Only six left. Ugh. I think Elijah Burl definitely needs to take psychedelics. Um, I think to find who he is as a person, to find his inner swag, to unlock his his final form and become his true self. But this is the downside of what psychedelics can do to your mind. Instead of you finding your true self, you can end up wearing the most insane hat ever. Since we're on the topic of Burl, in my last video, part one of this video, I made fun of Elijah and I was like, oh, he's copying Dylan. And of course, every time I say something like, like that, understandably, somebody in the comments goes, well, actually, he's not because Dylan was copying Dill and Dill was copying the guys from The Outsiders, which was his favorite book. And the guy who wrote The Outsiders, his favorite book, his favorite guy was... Okay, I get it. Inspiration, fashion, it's a complicated and convoluted topic. That's fine. We all have our own opinions. Cool. However, let me just say this. From a skateboarding perspective, okay, let's say you're a professional skateboarder who has the same size feet as LeBron James, which, as we all know as skateboarders, having big fucking tectonic plate feet does not look good on a skateboard. It's unflattering. So when you are this professional skateboarder and you're like, hmm, how should I dress myself? Do you choose pants that... I don't know, sort of hide your big feet? Or do you choose high waters that accentuate them? Just think about that logically. If you are going to dress yourself, how, how do you approach it? So does he arrive at this conclusion naturally? Or is he like, I think I need to fit in with my new board sponsor? Just a question. You can come to your own conclusion. Be careful if you do your drugs because you don't want to end up looking like the people on this website. Because seriously, like not not as a joke as is as, as being serious uh yeah 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 i'm putting greg let's in the paid tier at the top of the paid tier um because he is paid okay jeremy rogers some guy just messaged me and said you the type of guy to have a spitfire tattoo that's the worst message i've ever received no offense jim <laughs> jeremy definitely had swag at one point i think jeremy rogers 100 percent like lost his mind jeremy rogers was really a really fucking good skateboarder at one point or another he just decided that he didn't want to do this shit anymore and pursued his his true passion which turned out to be music uh as you can see 
This is my theory about when you get the treble clef tattooed underneath your eye. It's like if you're self-conscious about your music career, this is like a way of sort of like justifying it and proving it to everybody around you where you're like, well, if I get it tatted on my face, then there's no going back. Like it's this or it's nothing. Fortunately, I think that Jeremy Rogers was making a lot of money um, when he was skating. Um Damn, Travis Barker has swag. I don't think that this is gonna get copyrighted, so I'm pretty sure I can play it. She called, he called, but everyone said they couldn't go, so they don't, but who knows? I listened to this earlier, and I definitely have to say that the second listen is growing on me. There's no question about it. However, from a financial and career point, I don't think that quitting skateboarding for music was the most astute assessment of his own talents. But interesting thing about Jeremy, Jeremy Rogers is we're seeing history kind of repeat itself on a much smaller scale. And that is with Luke Blavad with his current career uh, tactics. Um, Luke Blavad just released a song. They kind of are on, on the same sort of wave. So um, Luke tread with caution because we know what what we know the fate that befell jeremy i would hate for that same thing to happen to you so i think we'll put him in the mid tier with luke they can kind of like discuss in the mid tier jeremy can sort of mentor luke and and point luke in the right direction and hopefully the two of them come out on the other side of this experience both as as better people don't have much to say about Aaron Cairo other than he has no fucking swag whatsoever. And this, is this, is this, what is this, man? You're not even allowed to do this anymore. Take that off. <laughs> Look at this, dude. Fucking on his millennial shit. There's a good tweet that came out today that reminded me of, of Aaron Cairo. Millennial coming. Oh, fuck, I'm doing a thing. I'm doing a thing. I'm doing a thing. Ah, so I did a thing. Uh, that's Aaron Cairo. I wouldn't let my I like I've said before, I wouldn't let my child watch his YouTube videos. I encourage the rest of you to also not let your child watch this strange and dangerous man. Uh, I'm putting him in row seven with Burberry Airy. You guys can link and build down there. Mikey Lafred. <sighs> Mikey Alfred is one of my arch nemesis, nemeses, nemesises on this channel, I just am like baffled by this dude's delusion and like irrational self-confidence. For some reason, he's like very into mixing preppy, like Burberry country club racket swinging like type of drip. He likes to mix that in with, with skateboarding. This will never look swag. I don't like my, Mikey Alfred's creative vision because what he brings to skateboarding is just available elsewhere in the world. It's not unique to skateboarding. Like Mikey Alfred's, what he likes, the imagery that he likes is the same shit that you could find on the outside of a Lens Crafters or an Abercrombie and Fitch. It's just basic as fuck and it's boring and it like appeals to, it appeals to normies. So what I don't understand is if that's what you like, fine, but why are you bringing that into skateboarding? Like skateboarding is not the space where people are gonna be receptive to that. It's just a waste of time in my opinion and it's lame and I think, you know, the more mainstream bullshit you bring into skateboarding, the more diluted it becomes. And like acting like, like creating a skateboard brand that looks like it could be outside of lens crafters is like somehow cool or like some genius fucking move. Uh, I just don't agree at all. I think it sucks ass. He talks about his art and tries to like justify this and explain his creative vision for his six-year-old drawings. And he is just so into himself, zero swag. He's got his illegal Civ page here. Uploaded this photo, this headshot of himself where he looks like he's some sort of politician, like he's running for office. In Mikey Alfred's mind, that's the amount of change that his illegal Civ brand is affecting on the world where he needs to post himself in a suit and tie with an American flag flag button he posted this of himself on his business account for his birthday just you know making sure you guys remember that i exist call me the biggest hater ever and i'll gladly accept it mikey alfred you can also go in row seven let's keep it going rainbow swag lord this fit goes crazy look at these kappa shoes no one else in the game is skating these
Rainbow Swaglord is uploading clips that aren't even clips. He didn't even do a trick, and, and he's posting that. I believe that um, Eric Costin once said that he would like to run Rainbow Swaglord over with his car, and then once he had run him over once, he would then reverse and run him over again, which I can respect. If you're going to hate on somebody, you might as well full send, and I think Eric Costin full sent that one, which I like. However, I don't agree with Eric Costin. I think that in terms of swag, Rainbow Swaglord, he doesn't lie in his name. He's really on some enlightened next level shit. He just did a kickflip body varial. Uh, to Primo in these Globes Hot Topic ass looking socks. Like my sister had a phase in seventh grade where she was wearing shit like this. Um, and now this is worn by like non-binary 100 Gex listeners. He's blending like all just different areas of the universe. And, and the result is is this masterpiece of a human being that is Rainbow Swaglord. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. Rainbow Swaglord is enlightened. Uh, with Rob Deerdick. I think that Rainbow Swaglord and Rob Deerdick probably would have a really interesting conversation with one another, and I believe that they are both enlightened human beings. Last three. Let's do John Shanahan. John Shanahan, he's like not a big skater, so he probably doesn't have that many images of himself. Okay, that's pretty fresh. Here's a John Shanahan clip that just got uploaded. It's pretty steez, pretty swag. John Shanahan kind of dresses like a, a bully in like a 90s movie that is like really into giving kids swirlies. Uh, I'm putting John... Uh, I'm going to put John in the top of... No, I'm going to put him in the mid-tier right between uh, Jeremy Rogers and Luke Blavad. This mid-tier is looking like the place to be. How do we pick between these two guys? Should we just leave them down here? This is a gif. TJ Rogers' clothes are just, like, too big. He wears really baggy clothes, and they're they're quite plain most of the time. He's kind of on some John... He's, like, kind of similar to John Shanahan, but, like, modern version. Like, John Shanahan looks like he's straight out of the 90s, and then TJ Rogers looks like he's trying to dress like somebody that's out of the 90s. But in, in the current day, I'm putting TJ Rogers in the, in the dungeon tier. TJ Rogers and Ninja Lifestyle are, like, kind of similar. I feel like they're very similar dudes. Last but least, we have Richie Jackson. Richie Jackson is like who you would expect to be put on a, a swag tier list, um, and that's because he has some pretty bombastic fits. Ooh, this is a sick board. Is that just a fat iPath? Did he draw an iPath logo on his board? You could probably tell at this point in the video I just ran out of steam, but the main thing to know is that Richie Jackson dresses like a psychedelic space pirate that abuses drugs. But more interestingly, I think, a, a more novel observation is that, to me, it looks like he and Aaron Cairo could co-manage the best GameStop in the United States of America. I gotta warn Elijah Burrell, if you do end up doing psychedelics, you might end up looking like Richie Jackson. However, I would say that Elijah Burl dressed up as Richie Jackson would be a much more desirable outcome than the Elijah Burl that is currently existing. I'm gonna put Richie Jackson in the curse upon your bloodline tier, and I'm gonna put him next to Elijah Burl so Richie Jackson can have plenty of time and space to convince Elijah Burl that the way that Richie dresses is the way of the future. Yeah, that's it. Um, this is my swag tier list. God, I feel like a million dollars, dude. Look how perfect this is. I didn't even, I didn't even plan for this, but yeah, this is a good looking tier list. I think I was just born to do tier lists, guys. I can't lie. Um, I think that this is my, my permanent calling. I don't think, I, I, I think I should only do this forever. If your boyfriend plays League of Legends, I literally don't know what to say other than like, you should buy a helmet because those fuckers beat women you are going to get suplexed in your room you are going to be fucking destroyed wwe style girl be careful